Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things and so far this Poketober I've made the starters fight each other and a couple counterfeit cards so all that's really left to do is make something realistic. And I figured why not make my partner's favorite Pokemon, Luigi. I've not made any legendary Pokemon yet, and I thought this might be one of the easier ones to make. After all, he's really just a big-bellied, monochromatic water wyvern with a weird face. Of course, I say this now completely forgetting that the only thing I hate more than making hands is making wings, and as I slowly come to realize, Luigi has both. However, by the time I've reached that point, I'm too deep into the process to pivot. For now though, I built his body out of aluminium-wrapped armature wire, so I can start to bulk out the body with a few layers of clay. Once I've covered the majority of the shiny part in dull grey clay, I can thicken up his torso and chest until he's got a top tier dad bod, at which point I can cover the remaining aluminium and clay before getting to work on his head. I figured his head's gonna be the most detailed part of the build, so I should probably make that first. I wanna make as much of Luigi as possible before I bake him, and by making the head first, I can comfortably grip his torso without worrying about ruining any of the detail on his body. Also, by making the head first, it gives me ample opportunity to drop him on his head or knock him into my camera, thus ruining the work I've already done. Luigi hasn't got a whole lot of detail to work with, and I didn't want to stray too far from the original design, so I'll make sure to keep his aerodynamic bicycle helmet intact, but because he's a bird, I thought I'd give his mouth a bit more of a beak-like appearance. I'll then goop up the inside of his mouth so it's a bit more mouthy looking before adding his great big soon to be blue eyebrows into which I can add a couple holes to fit some teeny tiny eyeballs. I can then poke and prod the clay around the eyeball to give his eye plenty of droopy eyelid. Now before I add the finishing surface texture to Luigi's face, I want to bulk out his neck so I'll add lots of little wormy dealies and clay sausages which will get blended in until his smooth noodle neck is extra wrinkly at which point I can go back to the face and start to poke and prod with various tools until his face is nice and textured. I'll then add some extra thin blobs of clay between his beaks to make his bird cheeks, then a couple more worms will get added to both the upper and lower beak to build out his gums, which gives me somewhere to stick a bunch of non-bird appropriate teeth. With the teeth in place and the face finished, I can go back to the neck and thicken out the sides before adding lots of little wrinkly textures into the clay. The cling film will help keep my tools from scoring too deep and should leave me with the wrinkly lizard-like skin that I've decided Luigi will have in place of feathers since the idea of covering his entire body in a layer of feathers makes my balls itch. Then I can drill a hole in his spine for mounting and a couple holes in his sides for arm wings which I'll fill with a large double wound wire that I'll then bend into the semi-final pose before adding the initial layer of clay. I don't want to make his arm wings yet, but I want to at least add the clay so I can make the connection between the arms and chest. Before I make the arms though, I want to make his legs which start out as little lengths of aluminium wire wrapped in clay then squished into some pre-poked hip holes then blended in and bulked out until they're an appropriate size and thickness. To make his feet, I'll smoosh some flat blobs of clay onto the underside of the leg nub then fold it back on itself to make sure there's plenty of clay on clay action, then I'll pinch and pull the feet into the shape I want before cutting some teeny tiny toes into the tips. I'll then refine the shape of the toes as well as add some finer foot details before giving everything a smoothing to hide the fingerprints and seams before coming back with a variety of tools to add whatever little surface details and textures I think either make sense for the shape or fill in otherwise boring flat surfaces. Luigi is after all a massive magic water based bird monster so rather than worry too much about anatomical correctness I'm going with the rule of cool when it comes to adding the detail. Otherwise, once I've got the shape of his feet and tail figured out, I can give the entirety of his body a final pass with the cling film and tool texturing technique to make sure that there's no boring untextured sections left, before finally getting on to making his big floppy finger wings, which I'll make by wrapping the tips of his arms in a thick layer of foil, then covering those in a nice thick layer of clay. I'll then bulk up the rest of the arm and blend it all in so it's one solid smooth limb, then I can roll out some chunky sausages to stick onto the tips of Luigi's flippers to create his horrifyingly oversized wingers. I'll add a bit of palmy detail to the palm and add some padding, as well as thicken up the forearm since these hands have to weigh a ton, before squishing some thin blobs of clay between the fingers to give the hands lots of webbing. I can then thicken up the rest of the palm and add the necessary lumpy bits around the wrist and below the fingers, then once it's been blended in and smoothed out, I can move around to the back of the hand and add some strategically placed little balls along the fingers. 
I'll then blend these in and gnarl them up to give Luigi's finger some extra gnarly knuckles. Otherwise, that's the hands done, so I can move on to the rest of the arm, adding some definition to the shoulder and the biceps, as well as making the muscle connect more neatly to his chest. Finally, I can flip Luigi over and add the big lumpy square spinal spikes that protrude from his back. These can get attached in equally sized pairs running down his back, parallel to his spine, and blended in until they sit smoothly against his skin. I'll then take my smooth sculpting tool and gently press the bottom of the spikes in so they look like they're protruding from the skin rather than being connected to the tissue directly. I'll then give them a little lumpy tooth-like texture so they're not quite so smooth and boring and I can add the two little spikes to the tip of his tail. With that, the majority of my Lugia is looking Lou great, but I decided that I would rather he have some talents on his toes and fingers, so I'll cut some little sections of his digits away so that I have space to fit some little talons on top. Last but not least, I wanted to give Luigi some veins which I'll make by applying a thin string of bacon bond clay with a toothpick. I've started making veins this way since it's quick and easy and I think it generally looks terrific. I will, however, admit that I may have gone overboard and perhaps covered Luigi in about a dozen veins too many. Regardless, that's the sculpting finished, so all I need to do is fill the little mounting hole on his back in and I'm ready to get to painting, which starts with a full once over with a white base coat. I'll follow the white with a very barely off-white white to add just a touch of color, then I can get started adding the color to his belly. Instead of adding the solid lines, I decided to stipple the paint on so it looks a little more natural. However, I realized after applying the purple that I got confused and made Lugia cosplaying as Mewtwo, so I repainted the purple with a much bluer hue. I'll then carry this across to his back spikes, tail spikes, all of his fingers and toes, as well as his really cool racing goggles. It was at this point that I realized I hadn't really given much thought to how he'd be mounted, but I knew I wanted him to be coming out of a gout of water, and I figured this little clear acrylic tube would do the trick and be mostly invisible. Unfortunately, once I drilled the hole in his undercarriage, I discovered the tube was way too wobbly, and now I have a hole that I can't exactly undrill. For now, I'll jam a little dowel up into his guts so I can mount him on a block and finish painting. Despite my barely white off-white that's pretty much just a white base coat, he was still a tiny bit too white, so I blasted him with a grey wash in the hopes that it would help to highlight the various textures and details that I so lovingly carved into his skin. I ended up dry brushing his body to bring back a bit of the white, but apparently I didn't record that since I'm bad at my job. Then I tickled the tips of all the blue bits with some progressively lighter blues to add a blue gradient and make them all a little less one tone, then I painted the inside of his mouth and his cheeks with a kinda gross pale tan flesh tone wash. I then painted the eyes white and once the fleshy mouth bits had dried I painted the teeth white as well before going back to the eyeballs and adding some little black pupils. Somehow painting Luigi with two colors took a hell of a lot longer than I'd planned for, but he's all finished which means I need to figure out some way to make him fly. Enter the Perspex Sheet. The plan, in as much as I ever have one, is to make a little pedestal that Luigi can stand on, but it'll look like a wave so it's not quite so obvious. First though, I need to cut it to size, which I'll do by scoring the strips that I want and carefully snapping them off on the edge of my desk. You come off. Nice. I'm then left with some lovely little strips of acrylic sheet that I then need to bend into a wave, which I can do with the help of my good friend, Fire. A little heat applied to the acrylic sheet will soften it up enough that I can then easily bend it into the shape I want, and once it's cooled down, it's nice and rigid. Obviously, I'm doing this in a well-ventilated room with all the necessary safety precautions. Trust me, this is the internet, and no one ever lies here. To make my wave a little more stable, I'm going to stick it to another acrylic sheet with the help of a little 5 minute epoxy applied liberally between the two pieces. Finally, since Luigi's a bit of a chunky boy, I've bent another wave that I'll fit into the curve of the first to strengthen it. Once the epoxy's cured and my wave is stable, I can fit Luigi on and add a few little bits of acrylic offcut to help make sure he's not going to fall off. A little hot glue will hold him in place and I'm ready to add my ocean which comes handily supplied in this tube of clear silicone. I'll cover the base in a thick layer then with a finger dipped in isopropyl alcohol I can start to spread it out so it covers the base in the wave. I'll stick a couple more curved pieces of acrylic onto the base and then add more and more until the acrylic is hidden beneath a thick layer of my fake water. 
I'll work my way around the waves until the silicone wave is pushing away from Luigi's feet and the acrylic wave is all but hidden. Once the silicone's had a bit of time to set, I'll add some thin flame bent acrylic tubes to the tips of the waves to add some final magic looping water whips. Finally, since he's bursting out of the water, I figured he'd probably be wet, so I'll give him a full once over with a high gloss varnish. Otherwise, that's us done here and on to the glamour shots. As always, a big old thank you to my lovely patrons of Patreon and a big old hey how are you to my newest patrons, Happy Birthday Jolly Baconator, Ciro Aesthetic October, Spread the Nerd, Gintaris Kislaukis, Breadbug, Toby Allen, Rodrigo X, Nathaniel McCoy, John Angle, Viola Le Patado, Freddy and Daddy, Pokemon Guys, Agent M Superman, Lucy Gales, Sarah Johansson, Wobaf, Free Parking, Mother of Noodles, Rage Gwyn, and Soggy Nuts. You are the magical water silicone wave upon which this channel sits. Don't forget to like that hit button and notify to the bell if you want to get more subscribes. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.